What's going on, everybody? This is Neilville Piano. Welcome back to another episode of the NVP Show. We have a lot of topics to get to here in the world of sports, so let's get right to it. First thing we're going to talk about today is Major League Baseball. Obviously, as we know, the trade deadline is come and go. Now all these teams that are trying to make the playoffs are pushing towards getting there and hopefully winning a World Series. But the one thing I want to talk about is the three big announcements that happened in the last week. First one we're going to talk about is Prince Fielder, the Texas Rangers, who due to a very serious injury that involves his spine and his back, will announce, has announced his retirement from Major League Baseball. Now I got a chance to watch his press conference a couple days ago, and it was very, very hard to watch. It was very sad. I even teared up just watching it. You had him and his two kids sit next to him, and when he broke down and cried, so did they. And it was just a very emotional time for him, knowing that his major league dream is now officially over due to injury, and he has to move on and do other things with his life. Hopefully, with the amount of money that he's made, he will, he will be able to build a successful life after baseball and continue to be happy. And It's a really tough time for him right now, knowing, like I said before, knowing that your major league dream, you've worked so hard to get there, now you're over, you can't play anymore. It's a very emotional time for everybody. So I give out all the best wishes to Prince Fielder, and hopefully he will do some great things with his life after baseball. The next guy I want to talk about is Yankees first baseman Mark Teixeira, who a few days ago announced that he will retire at the end of this year's regular season. What does that mean for the Yankees? Well, a lot of money is going to be obviously spent that because Teixeira is now finally going to retire. But the thing is that the Yankees cap space will open up. They'll be able to go after some free agents and bring up some of the young kids, which they've already done. Just like today, the Yankees called up Aaron Judge, and I believe, I might be mistaken, but I believe he's going to be playing first base today against the Tampa Bay Rays, so you guys can watch that on Yes or listen to it on the radio. But Mark Teixeira was, was picked up by the Yankees in 2009. Unfortunately, what the Yankees gave up was their draft pick for that year's draft. And who did the Angels, who was Teixeira's team at the time, who did the Angels use that pick on? Mike Trout. So if you think about it, maybe the Yankees traded away Mike Trout to get Mark Teixeira. So, but who knows? The draft is always 50-50. We never really know. But Teixeira played some good years. Unfortunately, he was up and down with injuries. He did help the Yankees win the World Series in his first year. But every year after that, it seemed like his skills were declining. Like I said, he kept getting hurt. I would talk to my parents and my friends and other people about, geez, it seems like Teixeira all the time is hurt. He's never playing. He never plays a full season. I remember two or three years ago, he was talking about this special diet that he was on, that he was able to stay much healthier. He played a lot longer. This year, he's been playing a lot, but I think Teixeira realizes that his skills are declining and he doesn't really want to end his career on such a bad note. His season has not been terrible, but it's not been great either but he's hoping that he can finish with a positive outlook and hopefully move on with his life. And the last guy I want to talk about, and I'm sure everybody wanted to hear me talk about this, was Alex Rodriguez. A few hours ago, the Yankees officially released him, and so now he is, he is now a free agent, and he will be working with the Yankees as a special assistant in spring training, and so it'll be interesting to see how A-Rod mentors these young kids coming up in the system. But last night was his last game in the Yankee pinstripe. And for a lot of people, it's a little bit hard to believe that now all of a sudden Alex Rodriguez is going to be gone from the picture. You're not going to wait till after the season ends. He's, he's going to stop right now and let the young guys come in and try to help this team maybe make the playoffs this year and hopefully develop into a championship team again in the upcoming years. But last night, he was able to play third base for the first time in I don't know how long. He played one out in the top of the ninth when the Yankees were winning and it was a strikeout by Dylan Batanzas, and then after that, he walked off the field. A lot of people were cheering for him, congratulating him, giving him a lot of praise, and it was really nice to see the Yankee fans give him so much praise, even though with all the things that have gone on in the past couple years that he's been with the Yankees. With the bat, he played pretty well. He went one for four with an RBI double. So he did help in the win for the Yankees, so it was good for him to help out the team in his last game, I think myself and a lot of people, and definitely A-Rod, 
probably wanted to see him hit a home run in that game. That would have been a great way to cap off his career. But, you know, sometimes the baseball gods don't work that way. But they certainly helped him in being able to contribute into the Yankees' win. One last thing about the Eric situation that I find very interesting. I was talking with somebody before about this, just before I got on. And what was interesting is that Derek Jeter wasn't there. And they're honoring the 96 team, I believe, today, if I'm not mistaken. They're honoring it today. Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Jorge Posada, Bernie Williams. None of them were there last night to help celebrate this moment. So that makes you wonder, was a -Rod's attitude, especially being a lot younger and a lot and definitely immature, did, did his reputation, his attitude towards the other players, because A-Rod, when he was not with the Yankees yet, he was bad-mouthing Jeter, of all people. And that really rubs Yankee fans the wrong way. But it makes you wonder, what, was his attitude just too much for the Yankees to want to celebrate him and want to make him feel like he was a big part in the Yankees franchise? It's tough to tell, and I think it was definitely a surprise that I found out that none of those guys were, especially Derek Jeter. But like I said before, you badmouth them, maybe they, maybe they weren't really that much friends. I mean, it seemed like to me at times that they were buddy buddies, but it doesn't really look like to me. Maybe, maybe it is or maybe it isn't. I don't know. But another question that somebody asked me, do I think A-Rod will make the Hall of Fame? And my answer to that question is no. Even if they have new guys coming in, to as the Hall of Fame committee, I just I can't see it. It's he's just done too much bad stuff for him to ever be considered to be in the Hall of Fame. I also think Barry Bonds shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Roger Clemens as well, and and a few other people that might be missing. But I really hope that in the couple, in the next couple of years, people will forget about what A. Rod did. They'll move on and they'll stop bad mouthing because it's really been tough for me to watch so many people, now that they know that he'll no longer be with the Yankees, saying, oh, baseball will be so much better without you. And that's just totally mean. You're putting all the blame on just one particular person. I would really love to see that whole list of people. And I guarantee if you see that whole list of people that took PEDs, it's going to make A-Rod look a lot less of a bad guy. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk some preseason football, some especially sizzle. the Giants and their new offense, defense, and their new head coach, Ben McAdoo. We'll see you when we get back on the MVP show. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be the way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. 
Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are Farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Welcome back to the MVP Show. I'm your host, Neil Villapiano. Next topic we're going to talk about, preseason football. Down in the Meadowlands, both the Jets and Big Blue had their opening games of, the, of this year's preseason, and both teams look pretty good. Obviously, they're trying to get some new things in. The Jets with getting Ryan Fitzpatrick back and getting their offense rolling again. I had a chance to watch the game, and to be honest with you, I know it's preseason, but still you can make some sort of opinions about what you see. What I saw was that the Jets offense looks like it has a chance to be really good, but I have a tough time seeing Ryan Fitzpatrick doing the same type of stuff he did last year. It's really tough for me to see. And I, I'm just thinking that I, he's not the quarterback of the future. I'm sorry. He, I'm sorry, Jets fans. People might get mad at me, but he's not the quarterback of the future. The quarterback of the future is behind him. And no, it is not Geno Smith for the 85th time. I'm tired of people saying that too. The quarterback of the future is their third string quarterback out of Baylor, and that is Bryce Petty. And some people would say, oh, Bryce Petty, he didn't play that well last night. He played with the twos and threes. That doesn't mean anything. A lot of those guys are not even going to be on the team at the beginning of the season. But Bryce Petty plays well. He throws a very tight spiral. He's very accurate, and he can lead that team. I know he's a leader. I can tell by the way he talks, the way he expresses himself. I think he's a leader, and I definitely think the Jets should develop them. I was talking to somebody earlier today, and they believe that out of all the four quarterbacks, the only guy that's going to get cut is Bryce Petty, and they're going to keep Christian Hackenberg, who didn't even play two nights ago. He, he, they showed him standing on the sidelines with the headpiece in his ear. I mean, and it's just, he didn't even play. So why would you cut somebody who's been playing, who actually is showing you what he can do, for a guy that hasn't even set foot on an NFL field yet. It, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So like I said, Bryce Petty is definitely, in my opinion, going to be the future quarterback of the New York Jets. Fitzpatrick will be gone in another year or two. Geno Smith eventually is going to get released or something's going to happen, and they're going to have to develop Bryce Petty in order for them to win. And he is the guy that I believe is going to lead the Jets to a Super Bowl. And I might be totally wrong, but that's just my opinion. And I think they should also keep Christian Hackenberg. They should keep him as well. And then they should get somebody off the free agent list or another rookie or whatever. Just keep them young. Young players, in my opinion, are what definitely help you build championships. Obviously, you also have to have a mix of veterans as well. But especially at the quarterback position, especially the older guys, the, the their bodies can't seem to take the hits as well. You look at Peyton Manning, he had to sit out for several games with injury and poor play. And you saw Brock Osweiler come in and helped the Broncos, and he was a big reason the Broncos made the playoffs and went to the Super Bowl, so kudos to him. Let's talk about Big Blue. Last night, they had their opening preseason game against the Miami Dolphins, and to be honest with you, they kicked Mofobo in, in some ways. I know the score doesn't show it, but and they lost 24 to 10, but there were some aspects of the game where they looked pretty good, but the one place that bugs me, that has bugged me, for two or three years now, is the backup quarterback position. Ryan Nassib got the start. Ben McAdoo, in his first, technically his first game as the Giants' new head coach, he sat down. Eli Manning, he sat down. Victor Cruz, obviously still recovering from his injury. And we'll get back to him in a, in a minute. And he sat down Odell Beckham as well for a while. And I think that's smart. Keep them fresh so that they're ready for the long, hard, enduring 16 game regular season and that might really benefit them in keeping them fresh and keeping them getting ready and hopefully making the playoffs and maybe winning a Super Bowl in another year or two. We'll have to wait and see. But Ryan Nassib, in my opinion, he's just not that good. They, they need to get rid of him. 
They've had it for a few years now. I don't know who decided to get him. Might have been their uh, GM, Jeremy Reese, but they got to get rid of him. They had a good quarterback before, a good backup quarterback. They definitely had David Carr, who retired, so it, it's fine. But they did have somebody working out for them in minicamp last year, and that was New Jersey native and former Rutgers starting quarterback Gary Nova. I was talking with somebody a few uh, last year, and they personally did not like Gary Nova. They didn't like him one bit. They liked Mike Teal, obviously, for, for, for obvious reasons, because he did very well at Rutgers. But Gary Nova, even though he made a lot of mistakes, he was still pretty good. He broke most of Mike Teal's records, and he did lead them to a bowl game in the first year that they were in the Big Ten, which is, in my opinion, the toughest division in college football. They should have kept him. Or they should have kept Josh Freeman when they had him. I know that some people might not agree with me there. But Ryan Nassib is not their future. You know, Eli Manning only has maybe three or four years left. After that, who are you going to have to back him up so that they can smoothly develop him into being that starting quarterback? It's not Ryan Nassib. He threw several god-awful passes last night. It, it just looks so ugly. He obviously got off to a very good start with driving the team down for a touchdown to open the game. But after that, they, they really just didn't look good. But the biggest, the biggest thing that a lot of Giants fans wanted to see was how well their defense played. And to the most part, they looked improved. Obviously, they don't have the world's greatest expectations to do well, but anything better than what they did last year is a plus for them. They spent a lot of money getting people like Oliver Vernon and a few other guys to try to make their defense better. And I'm hoping that they can continue to develop in this preseason and do well in the regular season. There were two rookies that stood out to me last night, and that was Eli Apple, cornerback out of Ohio State, who the Giants picked in the, in the first round. He got hurt, but it, it turns out it was a left leg strain, so it looks like he'll be okay. Thank, you know, Giants fans are probably saying, oh, thank God, because we've experienced a lot of injuries in preseason and struggling right out of the gate. And, I don't think Giants fans want to go through that again. Another guy that stood out was Sterling Shepard. He made several great catches, including a tremendous diving catch. I was like, wow, this kid's going to be really dangerous out of the slot if Victor Cruz doesn't play. And I'm hoping that he can, but his injury is just not something you can really recover from and play to the level that he had played before he got hurt. Also, Sterling Shepard got hurt in that game, but it turns out that he's okay too. He injured his groin, but... He was fine, no medical attention, so all's good for the Giants right now. We'll see how they do in the rest of the preseason. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Rutgers football as training camp is now officially underway, and we'll talk a little bit more about college football when we get back here on the MVP Show. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. 
It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the MVP show here with your host, Neil Villapiano. Next, last topic we're going to talk about today... Rutgers football is finally back as their training camp is officially underway with day four coming up later today. They actually have an open practice today at 3.30, and I'm hoping that I get to see some of you people, you Rutgers fans out there today to get, to get a chance to go up close and personal with this new team and their new head coach, Chris Ash, and their whole new coaching staff. I'm personally excited. I'm, very, I'm also very optimistic. I don't know how they're going to play this year. But I love that they've changed their offense to a spread. They kind of blend in with all these other teams that are doing it. They're going to be up-tempo. They're going to try to score a lot of points. And that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I cannot wait to see this team play in action in this year. There's a few things to talk about with regards to Rutgers. Obviously, they had all those scandals last year with their former head coach, Kyle Flood, and their unfortunate fights with their quarterback, Chris Laviano, and wide receiver, Leontay Carew who's now with the Miami Dolphins. I just feel it's just a f breath of fresh air that they have now a new head coach, new coaching staff, new philosophy, new attitude, new sense of direction. They want to build a championship team. It's going to take a couple years, but they're getting a lot of guys from New Jersey, and that's big. And New Jersey is definitely one of the states that has a lot of talent. I'm not disrespecting any other states like California or Texas or Florida that have a lot of talent. But New Jersey is up there with them. And if, the, if Rutgers can get a lot of players, if not all players from Jersey to come to their team, watch out. They're going to be good. They're going to be really good. They're going to start kicking Mofobo. But one position that a lot of people want to talk about, and I've read up about, is the quarterback position. The Big Ten Network is taking a tour around their, the Big Ten teams, going to training camps, talking to the coaches and players, getting to know them. Yesterday, they were at Rutgers, and they talked to new head coach Chris Ash and a, and a few other guys, including their offensive coordinator, Drew Merringer from Houston, who I'm very excited to see how he does with the offense. They interviewed him, and they asked him, so what's the, what's the new thing on the quarterback position? Ever since Chris Ash has gotten here, that position has been asked every single time he goes up to the podium or he talks to the media, every time. Big Ten Media Day, every interview, every time after practice the first couple days here at training camp. And finally, we have some sort of an answer. And the answer is this. It is a two-quarterback battle. And it's between starter, former starter, excuse me, Chris Laviano from Long Island, and transfer quarterback out of TCU, Zach Allen. Zach Allen might have a little bit of an advantage because he went to TCU and they played in a spread offense. And so that might give him, like I said, might give him a little bit of an advantage. But I've heard that Chris Laviano has done a really, really good job in developing himself into a spread quarterback. He's developed much quicker than a lot of the coaches uh, expected him to develop. And so basically, what you're going to have is this. Uh, you're going to have a quarterback battle, and there's going to be a lot of fans that will probably not want Chris Laviano because of all the things that he went through last year disrespecting the fans a little bit on social media, which I was astonished by, and just poor performances in some of the games. Now, that might not might be totally his fault, but it's a lot of fans just don't like him, and I personally hope that he can redeem himself and do well. With Zach Allen, it's a breath of fresh air to a lot of people. 
transfer coming in from a big time college like TCU coming to play for Rutgers in New Jersey, it's, it's it makes a lot of people excited. Now I talked about last week about the other two quarterbacks that that are available in Hayden Redding and Giovanni Rescona. The question is, what happened to them? Well, it looks like to me that they are not developing as quick as the other guys. Hayden Redding is another transfer transferred last from last year from. LSU, who didn't play in a spread offense, they played in an offense very similar to Rutgers. That's why he probably thrived a lot last year, because the offense was very much the same. But, in this, it, it takes a long time to learn a new offense. I mean, shoot, when I used to play, I had to learn from learning a triple option offense to a spread offense. And that might seem very simple, but looking at the concepts and the routes, it was tough. Don't get me wrong, it was very tough to learn. But I felt I feel like I've, I learned it, so I feel like in some ways I can give you more of a perspective about that type of offense and what that offense is going to bring for Rutgers. It's going to bring a lot of up tempo, fast paced type of play. It will hopefully result in a lot more points, and they'll be able to compete against some of these teams like Ohio State and Michigan. Now I want to I want to talk about Rutgers and Michigan for just a second. I personally have a distaste for Coach Harbaugh at Michigan. He does some crazy things and has gotten himself in the papers and on social media a lot. Doing some crazy things, including wanting to just try to steal these players from New Jersey and take them away from Rutgers and play them on, on Michigan. Look at Jabril Peppers. A lot of people think he's, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate and he's a two-way player from New Jersey. So that, that's, a, that's a big example. And I feel slowly we're starting to see some sort of a rivalry build up. And maybe they can start playing for a trophy. Now, I don't know. If you guys want in the comments, you can uh, suggest names for a type of trophy that maybe you could call that for a Rutgers-Michigan rivalry or any type of rivalry that Rutgers may, might want to get in the Big Ten. I feel, like I said, the rivalry is starting to build. And I cannot wait for that game in Piscataway under the lights. With the stripe out, they're not doing a blackout, they're doing a stripe out for Michigan versus Rutgers. I think that's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. The stadium's going to be packed. People are going to go nuts. And I'm going to be, and I'm hoping that I get a chance to go and watch that game because I am really pumped for that game and this entire season. It, it's going to look really, really good. Last thing I want to talk about has nothing to do with college football. I just want to make a quick little segment here before the show ends. And it's about. Several quarterbacks in the NFL who were supposed to be good come out of college and did nothing. The one, one, and this is not very recent, but one from way back when, is Ryan Leaf. He, he did very well. He was a Heisman Trophy candidate coming out of Washington State. Went to the Chargers, had such a bad attitude, and developed into nothing. Went to the Cowboys and then retired, and that's it. it was, his career diminished very quickly in, four, in three, four years. So... That was a good example, but a huge example, and a lot of people would agree, me, agree with me on this, is Johnny Football Manziel. When I saw Johnny Manziel play in college, the first chance I got to, got to see him was at Alabama. When he, played, when he played for Texas A&M, he upset Alabama. It was crazy. I had some people who were very upset. I, have some, I know somebody who's a big Alabama fan, grew up watching them when he was a kid. Let me tell you, he was not happy about that result. And... I fell in love with the kid. He was, he was this crazy type of quarterback that would run around, throw plays, and make incredible plays. But he had those problems off the field, but nobody took that much of a big deal towards it. He played and he got drafted by the Cleveland Browns two years ago. And Cleveland Browns fans were jumping up and down saying, oh, we got our quarterback of the future. It's going to be great. Mantell's going to lead us to the promised land, lead us, finally lead us to the Super Bowl. Look where he is now. He's, he's, he's now out of football. He has a lot of problems. He's been trying to go to rehab. He's, he's lied a bunch of times to people. And he's just building a huge, bad reputation for himself. Somebody, inter somebody interviewed his dad, and his dad said if he continues to act like this, he won't see, a, he won't see life after his 24th birthday. And that, that's really sad. I don't want to see this kid just... just you know, throw away his life. And I'm just hoping that he can come back and, you know, 
be more successful in the game of football and focus more on football and not just about partying. And that's going to wrap it up here for this, this week's edition of the MVP Show. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you continue to watch as we continue to talk about the world of sports. And hopefully next week I'll have you guys a little bit of commentary about the Rutgers practice and Giants practice and a few other things. So thank you all very much again, and we'll see you all next time. So have a great day for all you MVPs out there.